say hello to Traveler-san. Through the creative use of game mechanics, and at times glitches, we're on a quest to see just how much of Genshin Impact can be completed using only the Traveler. And we sometimes break things. If you enjoyed the series, do make sure to like and subscribe. It helps Traveler-san out a lot. Genshin Impact's movement system is beautiful. In today's episode, you will see why. As we go through this list of character story domains without the use of skills, bursts, or even gadgets. All while only using the Traveler. It'll be as if he doesn't have an element. That's Amber, Kaya, Lisa's, and Shangling's domains. We're about to turn Genshin Impact into a platformer game. But before that, let's briefly talk about said movement system. There are a few quirks to it, and at times, it can be frustrating. A good number of players likely know of bunny hopping, and uh, I totally thought it was patched like a year ago until someone brought it up to me. Thank you, G. Capucho. It's an amazing quirk. So much that I'd call it a feature. Well, unless the character is a short or mid-height female. Because for some reason, their jumping ability is lesser than all other characters. Please Hoyoverse fix this. It should have been a version 1.1 update. Or better yet, the difference should never have existed at all. Been putting it on all my survey responses. There is also something I'm going to call the snap jump, because it makes the character snap to the first bit of terrain their feet touch, and stops all momentum. It's done by simply returning the control stick to a neutral position, or by releasing all movement keys if on keyboard, before landing. People have been doing it since the game launched, but for breaking domains without skills, it's a pivotal technique. Also, when landing after a jump, if one attempts to turn around, the character will instead take one step forward before doing so. This is sometimes enough that the character slips off a cliff. It's easy to avoid, just stand still until your character resumes their default standing position, but it's also just as easy to forget about and mess up when precise movement is needed. There's also wall kicking in the game. Uh, yep, it's sort of like in Super Mario 64. It requires two sloped pieces of land that cannot be climbed, so it's rare to find a spot that allows for it. Okay, that's enough of that. There are even more, but since they'll be highlighted in the domains, we'll just talk about them then. Let's start with one of the two most difficult on the list, Amber's Domain. This is the one that begins with a gliding segment where the player drops bombs on enemies. Klee should really be able to do this, or at least drop Jumpty Dumpty while gliding. Anyways, it's the second half of the domain that we want, so let's skip to it. Of course, a trial amber is added to the party, but as mentioned in episode 1's rules, Traveler-san is not allowed to accept the aid of anyone unless the game forces that character to be played, like in Shao's story, or even the Raiden Shogun's story, where there's no way to switch characters. Did I need to add additional layers of challenge by banning skills, bursts, and gadgets? Nope. Geo Traveler would make this a breeze, and Windcatcher, literally so. But it's certainly more interesting this way. First up, this long room with a gate. To progress, we need to detour to this section on the right, hop over the balustrade, and drop onto the side near the platform, up onto this little portion next, and then one giant leap to the platform. Bye bye, Hilly Churl. That's an open gate. The next room is locked behind an electrical contraption that Traveler San cannot reach. Disabling this contraption lowers the water, allowing the switch in the middle to be activated, which in turn opens the door. Notice anything interesting about the switch? Let's get a bit dangerous walking through currents of electricity near water, and boom! After a short dive, we're on our way. More than one way to solve a problem. That's good game design. Speaking of problems, here's the biggest one yet. A switch that is sealed, of which will only be dispelled when the hilly trolls atop those three floating platforms are defeated. Obviously, Traveler San cannot attack them from down here, which means we have to go up there. So, <laughs> yeah, how the heck do we do that? There are two objects in this room that will allow us to reach the hilly trolls. The first is this wooden structure on the right. It happens to be just tall enough to leap from to reach the nearby platform. Unfortunately, reaching the tallest platform isn't possible by leaping between them. And that's where the second object comes into play, the explosive barrels. These things can be stood on, and with good timing, a full sprint jump can be performed from atop them. The plan is set. Let's put it into motion. Oh dear, this is not easy to do while under a barrage of crossbow bolts. Traveler-san needs protect from ranged. Well, I guess the name is protect from missiles, 
but nobody actually calls it that. Careful now, uh, this is the one, this is the one. <sighs> yes, got it. This is a sprint jump into a snap jump landing. From here, it's onto the platform. Very carefully, gotta push the hilly trail away from the explosive barrels. Not sure why that hilly troll became unaggressive, but it'll make this part much easier. Time to climb atop, and wow, my PS5 controller isn't even half a year old, and the left control stick is already drifting. They do not make these like they used to. Alright, back up top. Oh, let's try again. Boom. Well... Not literally boom, that would be bad. Just going to push this hilly churl off their platform, and same with the third one over here. And that's not a wrap, because there's a second wave. Do it once, and some people may call it a fluke. Let's do it again. Off the platforms, you all go. Whoops, there's the boom. And that is still not a wrap because the first hilly trail I pushed off reset on their platform. There we go. That is such low health. I suppose there are continues if they're needed, but let's see if I can finish this domain without any of that. What am I thinking going for this treasure chest after I just said that? Close call. Don't think I'd have made it back without the height boost from standing atop the chest. Outrider, you have less chance of surviving this than jumping off the Animal God statue in Mondstadt without your wind glider. <laughs> so, less than a 100% chance. Got it, Raptor. Howdy, fellas. A one good hit and victory is yours. Of course, the same is also true on my end. Yeah. Alright, you literally asked for it. Taunt to get bodied is real. Folks, don't ever taunt your opponent. Alright, I got him! You sure did, Amber. You sure did. Onward to Kai's domain. Unfortunately, his is pure combat and said combat is easily cleared using only normal and charged attacks. The Ruin Guard at the end, while a lengthy fight due to its resistance to physical damage, isn't much of a challenge one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Next up... Look! Doesn't that shop look interesting? Today is such a special day. It's only natural that I'd want a souvenir to remember it by. So it is. In that case, I declare this the day of... The day of my life I wish I could get back because I spent my first ever outing with someone taking them on an annoying errand. Don't you think that's a bit long? Voodoo doll, have you lost your mind? What could I have possibly done to deserve this? Elisa's domain. Having Electro Traveler means I could likely solve the puzzles in here and complete it normally. But the challenge is set for the episode, and the rules will not be changed. A way around must be found. And find one I did by traversing the perimeter of the domain. Go around the corner, jump over to this piece of land that is, but also isn't enough to stand on, and then go around another corner. Hey, those are the spike traps, and we can totally stand atop them. So, they just put a teleport barrier above them. Ha. Huh. See those red sparkles? That's our ticket past the puzzles. It's a door of resurrection, and it can be activated like so. Alright, how about a little sidetracking? I've never explored out of bounds in this domain before, and this wind current is inviting Traveler San onto a glitchy adventure. How can I refuse? Without geo or skills, exploration is a bit limited. Except, this domain doesn't seem to require more than jumping. By getting atop the ledge here and following it to the corner, a nano bounds wind current comes into view. This can be seen from the very beginning of the domain. It's too far to reach by gliding towards it. 
I wasted quite the handful of continues attempting to do so. However, by jumping and gliding towards this opening, Traveler-san will grab onto it and pull himself up. These rooms look like they could have housed content. Maybe they initially had a different route plan for this domain, and that's why Forgotten Wind Current is here. Because it takes you way into the sky. There's another empty room up top. Honestly, really cool. Let's get back to the quest. This challenge is difficult without elements. It's entirely dependent on getting a ton of plunge attacks with the use of this switch. After a few attempts, it suddenly hit me. Why am I even doing this? Let's just break it. The end of the domain is tied to opening a treasure chest below this room. Drop down, glide over to the hidden room, and... I see. The staircases they put below the room seal it off. Around the side to the chest, up to the ceiling. Ah, huh. I guess it can't be open from down here. Not a problem. I'm sure there's a way to break into the room. There's an opening between the ceiling and the floor above, and I imagine uh, that's the route. By using the out-of-bounds wind current, we can get much higher in the domain, which is perfect for letting Traveler Sign glide into that open spot. Aha! There, and that, is a domain skit. Dang it. No open prompt. The hard way it is. I did eventually get through the challenge. It took many, many plunge attacks, and a little luck having the slimes all group up around the switch. We'll not uh, talk about the number of attempts, though. That's Lisa's domain crossed off the list. It's time for the main event. Shangling's story domain. Secret ingredient. Take a good look at this image. Given the limitations in place, do you see any way at all past this first room? The door won't open without activating this pyro monument, and there's not a single source of pyro. If we didn't have those restrictions, I see three possibilities here. Geo Traveler could likely just scale over the door. An updraft created by the Windcatcher gadget would take one over the low wall and into the next room. Small characters, like Klee, may even be able to squeeze through the opening near the top of the door. Although, since that would probably require Geo Traveler or Windcatcher to reach, not much reason for attempting that. All the limitations on Traveler San prevent all of that. There is only one solution. It's not flying out of bounds to reach something in the background and then climbing super high to fly over the domain. That would probably be impossible with these limitations anyways, and not to mention this platform has a teleport barrier not far below it. Can't even reach the vine over here. So then, the magic solution? This, the trimming on the wall. Can we call this the hang glider? Because of how the character hangs on the wall? What about wall gliding? Also, <laughs> Can you tell I messed this up a few times? I've known about this for a while, but this is one of the only places I found a use for it. The other being that I tried to build it into one of my Divine Ingenuity domains. Why this works, I'm unsure. Were I to hazard a guess, it may be because the small piece of trimming is a walkable surface. However, it doesn't have enough space for the character to land on. Similar to what we saw in Lisa's domain, but even smaller. However, when we round the corner, the trimming switches directions and... For the briefest of moments, the game believes there's a path to walk on and attempts to place the character onto it. And in that brief moment, we can initiate a jump to land on top of the wall. It's such a neat trick. Next, we need to climb this crumbled wall. This is done via bunny hopping. And in this case, all characters can do it equally. The first of three hurdles has been passed. Let's drop down, clear the room... Dealing with that big shield is a pain. I'm gonna have to get this fellow to light it on fire himself. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. 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 
I gotta break the ice with plunge attacks. And done. Up here is the second hurdle. Another door sealed by a pyro monument. And like last time, the magic solution lies to the right of it. Jump over to this vine, carefully climb to the highest part, and then leap over to this area. From here, it's up another crumbled wall. And then we're in the home stretch to follow this ledge straight into the hallway with the falling icicles. Or not, that's an invisible wall. Hmm. It's always important to take in all surroundings. Looking around, there's this a real convenient fallen column. Let's backtrack, glide on over to it, and follow it up. Bingo. It reaches above the invisible wall, allowing Traveler San to drop into the room. Let's grab the chest and carry on to the final hurdle, which is not one Pyro Monument, but four. Oh boy. To get through this door and onto the final boss, we need to look to our left this time. There is a secret exit in this room, and it's beyond a short glide over to here. And there it is, the Cryo Regis Vine. Battling this without using elements may take a minute. And that is a wrap. Four domains, all without elements, skills, bursts, gadgets, or even food. Only some good old platforming magic. I am honestly surprised I managed to find a workable path in Shangling's domain. I originally planned to do it with GeoTraveler after I got the Windcatcher gadget, but this was far more fun. Well, there's a cook-off to attend to wrap up Shangling's story quest. What's this? Culinary espionage? Not at all, but this is. <laughs> Good luck now, Brooke, and your assistant, who talks and sounds exactly like Mona. Smells divine. One little bite can't hurt, surely. But as for where Traveler San is headed next, that depends on the requirements for the big 2.8 Summer Fantasia event dropping in a few days from this video's publication. While there are plenty of places to go and many things to do, we'll end with our next destination undetermined. Hopefully, Traveler San can partake in the big event. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're enjoying the series, any and all support helps immensely. Whether that be a like, a subscribe, sharing this video with others, or all three. I also sometimes post sneak peeks over on my Twitter at Musashiden if that interests you. This is Musashi and Traveler-san, signing off. Till next time!